Welcome to present our final award of the evening, Danielle Carmanos. I believe each one of us is born with a spark, a fire in our belly that lights our path and guides our way. Each of you has a purpose, a call to serve, a beautiful and unique skill set that matters deeply to the world around you. For women, our spark is energized when we connect with other women. Together, we shine bigger, we shine brighter, we love, we laugh, we inspire, sometimes we even sparkle. We illuminate the world around us. Together, we fan the flames and we blaze a trail. But what if it wasn't safe to speak or soar or chase your dreams? Imagine a world of fear and chaos and the women you love the most being tortured, persecuted, punished for simply following their dreams. Dreams to become teachers, scientists, artists, and change makers. For the women of Afghanistan, this is their reality, a seemingly hopeless fate. But in that darkness, there shines a light, a young, hopeful, determined beacon that is bright enough to shine in the face of darkness. That light is Zarifa Ghaffari. She was born with a purpose to shine brightly, to be the voice and make history, blazing a path and taking a bold stand while the world around her was and is crumbling and the Taliban demands women be silenced and shunned. She refused to step aside or stand down when at age 26, she became the youngest and only female mayor in Afghanistan. Now I have to stop for a moment because this is America. We're free. We can be risk takers and thought provokers. We can question everything just because we feel like it. We're a land of record breakers and TikTokers and dream seekers. And in America, a young female politician is inspiring and exciting. She's popular and trend setting and encouraged by friends and foes to be bold and outspoken. But this is America. And that's, that, this was Afghanistan. This wasn't America, that was Afghanistan. And the war-torn country where bodies were hanging in the streets and bombs were being deployed without warning while women live in fear. A country where little girls don't dream big. They become child brides. So when Zarifa was appointed to serve her community and a public role, the world around her did everything to silence, scare, and sabotage her success. But she was steadfast and stood faithful to her calling, her purpose, her guiding light. She is smart and brave and shines with such extraordinary purpose that she illuminates a path and gives hope to women who thought darkness and fear were their only option. She has survived six assassination attempts while continuously and courageously staying the course, following her purpose. Led by her father, who knew his daughter, his little girl was special. He knew she would change the world and used his voice as a girl dad to fearlessly advocate for her until last year when he was silenced, murdered by the Taliban. When the Taliban took control of Kabul, Sarifa was destined for death, miraculously escaping in the footwell of a car and ultimately finding refuge in Germany with her husband, her mother, and seven siblings. She has lived a thousand lives of courage, and I believe she's only just begun. Her path isn't easy, but in the ranks of extraordinary freedom fighters, she is undeterred. One foot in front of the other, one inch, one life, one step at a time, 
She's a girl's girl. She's a freedom fighter. She's a visionary. She is the light that is destined to shine brightly, the beacon of hope to little girls who dare to dream, and women who pray for change. St. Francis said, all the darkness in the world cannot extinguish the light of a single candle, and she, Zarifa, is the light. It is my honor to introduce this video of the Ohi Courage Award recipient, Zarifa Ghaffari. I remember I was a child during Taliban and I was like four or five years old. I was going to this underground class when we were like hearing something on the top or maybe a shadow put your books and notebooks under the carpet so no one realized what's it. What did you dream you would become when you were? To be free of this limitations of life, you know? Every month I was facing these, you know, suicide bombs, roadside bombs, attacks, fights. Like it was normal then. Three times I got badly injured. My childhood stopped when I became four. Soldiers of the Afghan army are fighting for their country's life and they're losing. People fleeing the insurgents advance, the Taliban's flag flying. Taliban fighters, meanwhile, boast of their success. We've taken the governor's house and the police headquarters, say these men. Hundreds of thousands of Afghans are now refugees in their own country, fleeing the fighting or the brutality of Taliban rule. People are living in fear and dread. Women are already being killed and shot for breaching rules that have been imposed on what they can wear and on where they can move without a male escort. Your job is an extremely uh, dangerous job. It is necessary as women to be very brave to do what you do. The only thing that makes me come up for these challenges, that makes me powerful and keeps me brave, is just my confidence, it's just my commitment. That's why I'm still here, I'm doing my job, and I'm really proud of serving my country. My name is Zeri Ghaffari. Actually, I'm not a hero. I'm just the mayor of Maidan Shah. A mob came and chased me away. They thought that was the end of that. But I came back. I came back and I stood my ground. I want to talk to them. I want to talk to Taliban. You know, they killed my dad, they tried to kill me, they destroyed everything I had, man. And for me, what I'm doing is just like for humanity. It's a long way to fight for freedom. It's, it's no way to start a big, big fight for anything that you think it's right. Please welcome the 2021 OHI Courage Award recipient, Zarifa Ghaffari.
First of all, thank you so much and very good evening. Thank you so much for, for feeling me. Thank you so much for understanding what is at the life for women in Afghanistan. Thank you so much for having me here and thank you so much to recognizing my effort as a example of efforts of all women of Afghanistan. The award that I'm receiving today and I receive today, it's just, it's not only mine. And I share the pride, I share the love, I share the all, everything of that with all women of my country. The woman who I taught courage, who I learned courage from, who I really, really, whatever I am, I think, is because of them. The woman who made me the way strong that I am. The woman, the woman who taught me to, to be the Zarifa who I am right now, who, who is so able to stand and talk. While this Zarifa is so, so, so emotional and so weak, deep and hard. Because she has been broken too many times. Because this Zarifa has been seeing all 27 years of her life being destroyed, rimmed, and how easily just kicked off the reality and of the ground of her life. But yeah, I'm still here and I'm still standing, I'm talking, I'm laughing, and sometimes I'm stopping my tears so deep back in my heart and my eyes. Just because not showing people the pain that I have, because maybe for that I will be judged. I will be judged by the tears that I am having on my eyes because I am, in a, I am a woman in some point. Just because of my gender, whoever is around me, I am definitely sure somehow there are those people who, are, who just love to judge me with. To judge me with my clothes, to judge me with my scarf, to judge me with my speech, to judge me with my broken English, which is not my native language, to judge me with my feelings that whatever it is, it's all about my country. I am afraid of being judged. That's why I'm afraid of sharing my deep emotional feelings and thoughts. And that made me the one who I am. And that's why people think that I am more courageous. Being more than three times injured, just the three times so badly that I remember during school, commuting to your school, but not giving up. Not giving up when your dad is asking you not to go to school anymore because you will get killed. But you're going hiding from your dad and mom to school. The way 
if you are if you are going to any country abroad to presume your higher education, the way that your family members know about your uncles, your aunts, your cousins are going to judge you and using so, so unbelievable kind of words and thoughts about you and kind of abandoning your family just because of letting you go abroad and study. Studying you all two years of university in a way that all 24 hours of a day you have just a small piece of bread with a bottle of water and you can't survive more than that, anything, and you don't have the courage to ask your dad to send you some money, but still not giving up, still carrying it out with all whatever it is. Then coming to society, fighting for your rights as a normal human being. I really hate this gender division by like men and women. I am first human. So fighting for your humanitarian rights as a starting you, you need to Fight with your dad's thoughts. You need to kind of make him trust you the way that you love yourself to be. Fight with your mom's thoughts. Fight with your then all family and then your neighboring society and then your living society and then your country and at the end fighting a terrorist group which is really and which are giving the rights of killing you every time to themselves. But still not giving up. Still carrying it out. Carrying it out to the way that you are losing your dad in a way that it's more than 15 days that you are you didn't meet him, and you didn't hug him, and you, you're commuting home after 15 days, and you're calling, you're messaging your mom that I'm coming home. I hope you're home. And few minutes back, you were receiving a call back from your sister that dad is dead. He's no more alive. And you're calling your mom that mom, is he alive? The only sentence. And reply back, no, he died. And you can't do anything. It's still you have to be strong. And you are. It's, it's the only choice that you have. Because the way that you're following it's not so personal. And just the third day of your dad's death, you're going to your office. You are walking as a so normal person without showing any pain to anyone. I think this is all so simple for and so normal. This all don't need courage. This all needs a little bit the knowledge of the need of humanity, the need of humans, the need of the world, the need of women, the need of human. And the way that you learned it out of your own life that how important it is to not give up. Because 
being the voice of those people who are still not able to have the platform to speak it out needs all this. So whatever I am or whatever I did or whatever I'm doing is just, I think, every human's equal duty. And I'm just, I'm not courageous moreover. I'm not amazing. And thank you so much for that, that beautiful speech and then uh, words describing me and my life. But Seriously, I'm not that much amazing. I'm just a simple, normal human being, and I'm trying to be the same way all my life. It's it's all like, it's all that it's all about me, because I think, and I know, and I trust, and I believe, how important it is to be like this in a country like Afghanistan. Because I know there are too many girls, at least in my own closing families, they don't have right to choose at least their universities. My younger, like so many girls in my family, they're so young than me. I remember their birthday. And now these girls are sitting at home and taking care of two and three babies with no educational future, at least Previously, but now it's all gone to zero and gone to eight. So this and these all women, I think, being their voices, a, a normal responsibility, just I'm taking care of and taking us all forward with me and carrying it out. So that's all about me and what I am doing and whatever is happening today in my country, whatever is happening around the globe and however is the world treating me, my generation, my country, my woman of the country, the human beings of the country it's really a maze. I really can't. Sometimes I'm like, I think I'm in a shock. I think maybe I, I, I missed something in between. I was in a dream previously 20 years, or maybe I am in a dream right now, or in that nightmare right now, because I feel so disconnected to the world. I feel my country was never ever part of the world because within these 20, these, these two months, two and a half months, we saw what and how the world is for us. Can you imagine how hard it is selling your 12 years old daughter for 50,000 Afghani, which is $500? Can anybody imagine how hard it is just to be a loyal son for your country or a loyal person for your country or just a normal citizen of your country who served your country? You are waiting every second of your death back inside your house and too many people are getting killed the same way. There are every day, like tens of killings. People are dying and getting, like, gets murdered just because of uh, serving their country, just because of being part of development, part of the, the well for their country, for their nation. Women are abundant. Girls are not able to go to school. There are too many girls. Two months ago, they were just getting, they were going to this, 
tuition and, and was getting ready for university entrance exam at the end of the year. And now they are just sitting at home and they like have nothing and no light ahead. Do you know, can you imagine how hard it is? Do anyone imagine that the responsible of a family, maybe six, seven children, or a, is a woman who was working in one of governmental or non-governmental offices or wherever he, she was working, and right now she is abundant and she had to just sit at home and not, not able to go out and walk, and she sees her children are dying because of the lack of food. Just two days ago, we had the news that eight children were die in one of the parts of the country just because of the lack of food, just because of the hangover. It's 2021. People are going to live in Mars. World is so busy. UN, NATO, European Union, USI, blah, 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 too many things. They are so busy. They are like, they are doing their jobs. Thank you, but what? But what? Eight child, eight child, or it just, it's just the news of a, like one part of the country. And it was the news that we could get it on social media somehow. But Afghanistan is not just a small part of the country. It's 34 provinces and now about 32 millions of people. Do anyone know how it is and why it is? Could we really, anyone, when, when as an Afghan, I'm talking always about these all. I'm sorry, Mike, Mike. I'm just taking a few more minutes of you people. I know it's, it's so late, but I'm taking a few more minutes before you say anything. Um, as an Afghan, when I'm talking about these all, people are just yesterday, I was, I was commuting airport with some people. I'm not gonna give more details on that. But the, one, the man who was sitting with me on my, uh, in the same car, commuting to airport, he was like, oh, we did our part. Now it's up to Afghans. They need to decide themselves. We don't kill. We already sacrificed a lot. And I was like, was I responsible for you coming to Afghanistan in 2001? That time I was just six years old baby. I just, I was just a baby girl. Well, am I responsible for you coming out so irresponsibly from Afghanistan and putting this nation and country and the generation in a fire when I am not responsible for you coming and getting out, then I don't care what you did because I see nothing at the result, as a result at the end of the chapter. For the situation in Afghanistan, everyone have equal shares. Not only Afghans, not only Afghan politician, not only Afghan government, international community, media, nation, Politicians, decision makers, policy makers, strategy makers, everyone share the blame. I share the blame. Maybe I wasn't the same voice which my country needed me in the same right time. I share it. When I have the deal and I am able to do that, I think everyone has to do it. Please, let's Rise your voice. Tourists are not anyone's friend. We are here to memorize and celebrate and 
recognize some of those people who have been fighting against inequality, injustice, and tourism or whatever. If you don't want another one to go through the same pain that these people have been going, please raise your high voices. Please stand so clear by the side of humanity. At least be more human to women of the world, in particular to Afghan women and human of Afghanistan. What we want is so clear, I will just shortly describe it in three sentences. First, please put pressure on your decision makers to not recognize Taliban, because Taliban are not just a, just a truly small group. They are an intelligence puppets of Pakistani intelligence, ISI, which is having, like, which can do everything, like we know, we recently, everyone here maybe know about the attack in Black Lives Matter protests and the chapter at the back of it. So please, recognizing Taliban will give a huge platform for tourism and a recognition of tourist activities. Secondly, it's about humanitarian aids. Please pave the way for humanitarian organized aid supply organizations like WFP, like ICCR, like IRC, like UNICR, to help people in Afghanistan. Not, please do not pay dollars to, um, to Taliban or to Talib government because there is no guarantee they will not use it again for tourist activities back in Afghanistan or out of Afghanistan. And the third one is, please, Sun and solidarity, you do your own part. Everyone can share their own part and do it the same way. So this is the need of this can, not only this country, I think this is the need of all globe, everyone, all around the world. I, on 5th November, it's my dad's dad's first anniversary. And I really miss him. I saw this gentleman with this uniforms. My dad was a colonel. He was using also wearing beautiful military uniforms. I miss him too much right now. So I don't want another girl to go through the same way. Please and please. If you stay silent the way you are, it will happen and again and again for people all around the globe. And you will have at the end just a regret or just a ceremony or just an event to share the pain. It's nothing. It doesn't make sense. It's nothing that we needed. The statements of you and the statements of politicians, the statements of decision makers or whatever, the statements is not a pill for my pain. I need action. Please and please, I need concrete action. Not I, we need a concrete action. I think the globe need a concrete action for tourist sponsor countries, for tourist sponsor companies, or whatever around the world, to stop tourism, to use these causes for support humanity around the globe. So at the end, the way Greece says okay to Nazis, I say okay to Taliban, I say okay to Pakistan, I say okay to all those people who are judging me for my dress, for my clothes, for my thoughts, for my word, for my religion. If I wear this dress, if I wear my scarf, it doesn't mean I support Taliban, I support extremist ideologies. It's, it's just because I love my tradition, I love my colorful dress of tradition, and I am really, really, really in love with whatever I taught from my mom, my parents, and my, my grandparents, and my history of my country. Thank you so much.